Hi everyone, my name is Adele Tulli, I'm the director of Normal, uh, showing at uh, Panorama Berlinale. Sei stata molto coraggiosa, sai. Guardati. Ti piace? Sì. Te lo vedi? Dove sono? Fammi vedere. Mm. Eh? Adesso sei una bambina con orecchi. Eh? Come mamma. Alma. Apri gli occhi, sorridi. Benissimo. Hello and welcome to the 33rd Teddy Award. I'm Hannah Congdon and I'm here with director Adele Tully to discuss her film Normal. Hi, it's lovely to talk to you today. Yeah, pleasure. And you just had your premiere, so can you tell us a bit how that went and yeah, how you felt I mean, to show up for the uh, first time? Oh, so exciting. I mean, very, very dance uh, and uh, beautiful to be here in uh, Berlinale. It's my first time here in Berlinale, so obviously there was a lot of emotion <laughs> in the air and, um, and it was uh, beautiful. I mean, it was uh, full uh, and uh, I was very intrigued to see how people would react. Obviously, it's the first screening and, and, uh, and it, there was a very, very interesting Q&A and discussion after the screen, so there were lots of questions from the audience. So I was very, very happy, very excited at the end of it. Like, uh, now you see me I'm, uh, like uh, <laughs> the day after feeling of uh, the release of tension and emotion. But, uh, but yeah, it was, it, was, it was great, great experience. Yeah, well, we've got some more questions for you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's fine. Um, so obviously the, the film's title is Normal, and, and the word normal can be, it's such a shifting term, it can be imbued with so many very loaded meanings. Uh, I wondered why you wanted to focus on that particular word. Well, uh, there are two reasons, let's say. The general reason is that the film, the very idea of the film is to sort of uh, question the very idea of normality, what, what is normal. So it, in fact, it's is, uh, is no, is normal with a question mark, uh, the ideal title in a way. Uh, the, 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 um, the other uh, reason is because when I started the research for the film, uh, this was sort of one of the recurring words that was uh, sort of shaping the public debate uh, in Italy at the time. I, I mean, this film is developed through, uh, as part of a PhD as well, so it's, it's been a long research. It's been like um, about four years of, uh, of, uh, of research. And, uh, and, uh, and during this you know, first field work and preliminary research, there was a lot of uh, debates uh, uh, about uh, no, what is normal, what is natural, what is traditional, because of some of uh, some kind of laws and changes in laws that were being done at the time in terms of uh, civic partnership and uh, and you know, so the, the the national public debate was very charged uh, with uh, discussions about uh, norms. Uh, in terms of uh, you know uh, an appropriate behavior in terms of gender roles and uh, and sexuality uh, behavior, so it kind of felt like is is a word that is so loaded with meaning, and it was very much part of that moment that it felt like uh, from the beginning it felt kind of the 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 tagline for the for the film for the concept of the film and eventually for the title. Mm. And it was the result of this extensive research. You must have compiled a huge amount of images. Yeah. Uh, so where did those images come from? So where did the footage of the film come from? And how did you even begin to decide what order you wanted to put uh, things in and, and put them film well, together? Well, this is this, the, 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 um, the struggle and the um, actual challenge uh, of the film to try to 
to build a narrative uh, without uh, a, st a storyline, without the journey of a protagonist, uh, without a clear narrative structure in a way, no? Like uh, it's, uh, the film is made of this sort of kaleidoscopic mosaic of scenes that are shot all over Italy. Um, so in terms of, uh, you know, you asked about uh, where they were shot, mm. they, they are, you know, uh, very different uh, places all over the country. Are and some of the other people, people that you knew or? It's a mix, it's a mix. Uh, people I met, people I knew, people I found. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very wide uh, mix of situations. And I shot more uh, scenes than I actually edited, as you can imagine, because yeah. the, the um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I said that's the challenge in the sense that uh, um, uh, it's uh, it's a film for me that tries to tries to uh, express and explore ideas uh, more than um, uh, the journey of a protagonist or uh, the story of someone in particular. So uh, and 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 tries to convey and explore ideas only through images without uh, almost no text. There is very little dialogue in the film, and there is also no voiceover or commentary of any sort. So. It's really just made of uh, associations and, and so the way that this sort of mosaic is composed is key uh, for the meaning of the film to develop because it's, it's all about, uh, you know, this web of connections that I try to do uh, throughout the scenes. And so there are so many elements uh, that, I, that I felt uh, that they were important when selecting the scenes well, the basic one is uh, having scenes that were corresponding to different phases of life, because the only sort of overarching narrative is the growing, right, of uh, the idea of growing, so from, from childhood uh, throughout adolescence and adulthood. So obviously I was looking for scenes that would balance these uh, generational uh, differences. And then a lot of other elements that would suggest uh, um, that would try to uh, reflect on how gender norms shape and permeate our lives uh, throughout um, th throughout our development as as, <laughs> as beings from 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 childhood to adulthood, and so moments that would uh, allow us to reflect um, on how and on what's the impact uh, of gender and what's the level of uh, performance of social. Um, social performance, social ce ceremony, in a way, uh, sort of uh, trying to, to find scenes that would convey this idea of, uh, of gender as a collective performance as well. No? So there are a lot of uh, mass scenes in which uh, people uh, move in unison or move uh, somehow synchronized, uh, or there are a lot of scenes with uh, masks or makeups or mirrors or or people being photographed or photographing themselves, like to suggest the idea of performa performing. Mm. And you talked about the uh, focusing on different stages of life. I wanted to ask particularly about the scenes that were focusing on, on the children and, and the younger stages of life, because a lot of the scenes are actually parents and adults imposing certain sort of gender performances onto the children. So, yeah. and, and the children don't always look comfortable with it, especially that opening scene with, with the ear piercing. Yeah. It's sort of teetering on <laughs> whether, whether she wants to be complicit in that gender performance. Yeah. What, if, what, it, what is it in society that means parents are so desperate to sort of in, entrench these values? Well, yeah, if you see, in fact, that this is a, one of, another of the key elements of the film is that not just with the scenes of the children, I think in general, most of the scenes, when there is someone talking, uh, it's so is or usually a trainer of some sort is someone that it, or is someone that is actually giving some sort of instruction so it might be a parent giving some sort of instruction to the child but it might be a priest uh, uh, you know giving some sort of uh, moral codes of conduct or might be um, a gym person you know a trainer uh, giving actual movement and gestural instruction so but the idea is that um, most of the of the figures uh, that you actually meet throughout these scenes are somehow giving some sort of instruction. And that's the idea of, obviously, 
uh, it's a metaphorically suggesting how we are always surrounded by prescriptions or uh, you know um, and how this uh, sort of uh, knowledge of what is normative and what is the actual um, code of conduct or the appropriate behavior to be socially accepted is kind of coming from so many uh, inputs. Uh, it, it might be family, very much so, often. Uh, it might be media, it might be, uh, you know, uh, the church or uh, any other inst religious institution. It might be um, school, like, it's just this idea of being surrounded by um, people telling us what is somehow supposed to be normal. Yeah. or how we are supposed to behave. And obviously with the children, I mean, that scene for me is, is, the, is the scene that I, I think is the most successful in a way. It represents really what I wanted to do with the film because that girl, without very, you know, uh, little reaction and little movements, just, uh, uh, you know, uh, very subtle kind of emotional reactions and, and a very, fixed gaze uh, suggests so many emotions at the same time, like it, it feels like you can read in her eyes at the same time pain but also satisfaction and, and also uh, you know frustration and fear and terror but at the same time fierceness and, and, and determination and, uh, and uh, you know um, there is this sort of um, the sort of, uh, I think, for me, she represents this idea of, uh, of uh, simultaneous pain and gain that uh, conforming to the norm um, entails, right? Like as if you're at the same time negotiating so much of yourself in order to somehow conform, but also gaining uh, social legitimation, approval. She's sort of rewarded. At it's the end, rewarded, isn't she? of course. It's a reward. So there is that sort of constant. Nego That's what I'm interested in the film. Is like how we all have to negotiate so much constantly in our existence to 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 decide how and 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 what to give up in order to conform. No, there is always a step. Even when we decide not to, uh, you know conform to, to some sort of, uh, um, sometimes it's unconscious, we don't even realize, but it's, 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 in, every, it's in, in, in every choice we do in life, right? We choose or not to put on makeup today, or, you know, it's, it's so much, uh, so many of the things that surround us everyday life. And in every decision we make, there is some sort of negotiation or struggle or eventually pain in exchange for the decision we make. So I think there is always this tension, um, and that's what mostly was, uh, was my focus and interest in the film. Not so much the general stereotypes, not, so much, not just observing what are the stereotypes that surround us, but how they affect us as people in everyday life. Yeah, and there's also quite a few scenes that show almost an industry of gender performance. So people are almost profiting off that. So there's the scene in the factory where these, there's these ironing boards being made for little girls oh. as toys. And then there's the, one of my favorite scenes was the wedding uh, photography scene where there's this completely absurd act going on with sort of performing this heterosexual relationship in front of the camera. Yeah. But in, in those instances, there is a, a sort of commercial profit being made from gender performance. I wondered, was that something that kind of you were consciously trying to demonstrate? Yeah, yeah, film? absolutely. I mean, obviously, as every system, no, because obviously, I mean, gender uh, normativity is a system, it's a social system that eventually, automatically becomes uh, commodified uh, and made, made into commodities and then sold <laughs> and, and it becomes profitable. So yes, there is clearly this connection and the factory for me is the only uh, a scene in the film that has no humans, obviously, and there's all these kind of machines automatically, uh, no, uh, seemingly without uh, the human presence, uh, shaping these uh, these objects, and, and and also the work of the sound that is very insistent, really pushes this idea of being in a factory as if you know it's also I mean the system that. Uh, shape us and, and forces us so much into into being something or another is also um, 
uh, is also a market. There is also a huge market behind it, and it's, uh, so it's uh, it, there is a sort of uh, double, uh, yeah, both ideas at the same time there. And for a lot of the film, you seem very distant, almost with the the camera. It's like you're just sort of showing, but not necessarily providing a particularly strong comment. But there are scenes where it felt like it almost verges on being satirical. Um, so the scene where uh, there's, the, I think, a YouTube star, and there's these girls flocking to, to see him, and they're bursting into tears, and you play this very emotional music <laughs> on top. Were, were there points where you were intentionally trying to be satirical? Well, I think in general, the whole um, the whole position uh, of the film is uh, in the film is 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 that at least what I try to do is that of being uh, in a very subtle line between distance and proximity. Uh, I, I, you know, I think this is very important in the film because obviously I want to be distant enough at, uh, at times to provide the space to look at uh, everyday scenes from a perspective that becomes unfamiliar and uncanny and sort of displacing to, you know, to, to allow uh, the space of um, of being confused and of questioning what we are seeing. So there is a certain distance that is needed to have that effect of being estranged in a way. But at the same time, I don't want to be too distant not to feel connected with what we are seeing and feel that we, you know, that we belong to that. So again, there are moments in which I I, I go closer because I want to feel the empathy and the connection with what we are looking at. I don't want to be neither too distant, neither too close. So there are moments in which uh, um, even with the framing or with the use of music or with the kind of associations in the editing, there is always this movement or at least this effort of trying to be at the same time uh, uh, remote and, and close. And, uh, and, with, and the use of music, as you say, I mean, not, not just in that scene, but in, in a lot of other scenes, it's uh, definitely used to, you know, to provide uh, an effect. Is is uh, is? Uh, I mean, uh, I think in general uh, the documentary is not trying to represent reality. It's true. It's ob it observes it without making a explicit comment in terms of uh, voiceovers, or uh, but it it does um, make comments through the form of the film itself. So for example, the use of music often is intended to sort of uh, encourage an abstraction uh, from reality or um, providing sort of some sort of displacement or some sort of uh, disquieting feeling or some sort of satirical uh, comment. I mean, so I think irony is present in the film and irony is often a very uh, strong uh, critical weapon to to think about things so, so yes there are all these elements and the use of music is very strong in that direction and most of the gender performances or, or the identity performances throughout reinforce like a heteronormative idea uh, but in the scene towards the end of the film where it's the gay I think gay marriage or gay civil yeah. union ceremony um, I initially thought Oh, this is this is sort of something that's countering uh, these gender performances or these performances of heteronormativity. And then, the more I was thinking about this scene, it also takes place with an audience. I think in a theatre or some kind of um, quite grand public space. Yeah. I wondered if you were making a comment on the fact that those performances aren't just intrinsic to sort of heteronormative behaviour, but are actually broader than that. Yes, actually, you made the point better than <laughs> I could do it. <laughs> no, but uh, it's fantastic that you framed it in this way because uh, obviously the ending might seem counterintuitive at the end of all this kind of journey through heteronormativity and then all of a sudden we see this and may sort of create a sort of um, uh, contradiction. And, uh, and my absolute intention with that ending is not to uh, provide a final statement that is like... Uh, uh, you know, a clear cut final uh, meaning uh, to the scene, but actually to create a further uh, questioning, so to open and complicate the, the, the discussion about uh, norms uh, assimilation processes even more. So it's a sort of double-edged uh, ending that precisely wants to ask 
the viewers and the audience um, want to encourage sorry the viewers and the audience to ask themselves precisely the questions that you have asked yourself like somehow are we seeing an alternative that uh, that prov that by replicating the norms in, in uh, unexpected or different ways may subvert them or are we actually in the grip of norms even when we are struggle against them in a way right is 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 sort of uh, is an open-ended ending, in a way, trying to uh, further complicate the question of, uh, of, uh, of norms and, and how they affect us beyond the heterosexual framework. And, and yeah. Yeah. And I just finally wanted to ask, obviously, you spent all this time looking at all these images that are to do with gender performance. Did it then make you question your own behavior, or has it changed your own behavior? and the way that you express your own gender or your own identity? See, for me, this was, a, in general, a very transformative, uh, transformative process. Uh, the whole research, not just the film, uh, because, especially because of the conversations I had, even, you know, uh, as I was mentioning you before, the actual making of the film, I was um, traveling throughout Italy, uh, engaging in these long conversations, and that, uh, was really engaging, I mean, uh, in the first person, in the sense that the conversations were mutual, it wasn't me interviewing as a neutral, detached uh, uh, person. It was, uh, you know, it was a mutual uh, engaging in, 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 in uh, deeply in questions of how we are affected in everyday life by, uh, you know, standards, behaviors, uh, expectations, and how this, all these pressures arrive, and what's your per personal background, what's your memory, you know, you, when you start, it's, it's almost like a consciousness raising uh, um, uh, experience, right? Because when you start discussing, especially with strangers, it's, it's very fascinating because you start to sort of, uh, retrieve memories of your childhood, of your adolescence, you know, that is one of the most difficult phase to negotiate that. Uh, and so I think in general, uh, I feel like I engaged a lot of myself in the process of this film. And uh, whether I changed something in particular, I don't know, but surely I think at the end, the, the film started as a research that was a bit more maybe academic in terms of, uh, you know, trying to portray gender performativity and it became very emotional. I think at the end, I think, I hope that in the film you can feel a lot of uh, empathy as well because there is this sense that um, that is very much part of our lives, of our bodies, of our emotions, that it's not just, uh, you know, um, it's not just a reflection in terms of, uh, uh, ideas of gender is very much how it affects us in the skin and in the in the movements and in the in our own bodies uh, so in that sense I felt fully um, you know fully engaged <laughs> thank you so much for talking to us today thank you it was very a lot, uh, great pleasure <laughs> <laughs> Un piacere. yeah and have a lovely rest of your time at Valenala. great Thank you.